Welcome back, Shaliners. Today, I want to continue my series on self-esteem, warm-blooded versus cold-blooded animals, and most importantly, Rihanna. Because I did a video the other day about how Rihanna is kind of like the anti-Kylie Jenner, right? Like, in terms of self-esteem, Rihanna is confident and cool and quiet in her confidence. She is a warm-blooded animal. She doesn't need any validation from the outside world. I mean, a little, we all do. But Kylie's the opposite. She needs constant selfies, constant enormous makeup, situations, tons of plastic surgery, because she needs constant validation from the world, because as a cold-blooded animal, she can't regulate who she is inside. And a lot of you guys are like, okay, I want to be an alpha like Rihanna, but I don't know how. And this is what we're going to talk about today, how to become an alpha female. But first, just want to remind you guys that if you have a love question of your own or want to talk with me privately about any little thing, follow me, excuse me, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. Also follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO where I let you guys weigh in on the next video topic and connect with me directly. And be sure to listen to my new podcast, Girl on Top, out every place podcasts are found. And on the podcast, I answer your best questions for the course of the week. So alpha femaleness. Alpha females are sometimes born, but they can also be made. Why? Because this is America and we can become whoever we want to be. Same in whatever country you're in. You can become whatever you want to be. And it's really important to note, first and foremost, that it's not, people aren't only alphas or betas. You know, there's, people are just people. And beta, when I talk about beta males, beta males are a very specific sort of gremlin person. Like they actively seek to oppress others. You know, they they don't have the confidence, so they do what psychologists call leveling. And when you don't feel confident in a certain arena, probably all of them, you either puff yourself up, right, to rise to the level of where you want to be, or you cut other people down. So when you see that behavior in other people, and usually I, no one just does one. They're puffing themselves up and they're cutting other people down. <clears throat> Donald Trump, not an alpha male. And if you think that he is, and if you support him, you can go ahead and X on out of this channel. But don't you don't like it, don't watch. So when you see that, you're like, aha, that's a beta male. But like I said, not everyone is one or the other. We don't have just like leaders in this world and shitbirds. Like we have a lot of good people in between or just doing their thing. But I understand the need to want to rise to that like boss bitch category. And I think any girl who has become that had to have this sort of come to Jesus moment with ourself, right? I did. And part, I mean, I, and it's not usually just one time that you sit down with yourself. You're like, I want to revolutionize my career, my body, my social life, my whatever. It happens a lot. And it can seem overwhelming if this is the first time you're having that talk with yourself because you're probably throwing it all out there. I want to revolutionize my career, my body, my social life, my romance, blah, 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 blah. You got to start small. I live in New York City. I'm a magazine editor. I'm an author. I'm a YouTuber. And it's like, I and all my friends wrestle with the question of, can you really have it all? I'm not a wife. I'm not a mom. I was a wife, opted out of that. I could be a mom if I wanted, but like then certain things have to kind of deprioritize. And so the concept of can we have it all really resonates a lot for, for girls as we get older, because yeah, like, this is the thing. You can have it all, just not at the exact same time. You know what I mean? I mean, just think about in, in the micro, like, yes, you can do a bunch of cool things over your summer break, but you can't do them all in one day. You have to prioritize and you have to meter it out in a way that makes sense and a way that's sane. Otherwise, you're going to throw everything you have out there and you're going to fail at all of it. And then you're going to be like, <gasps> I'm a failure overall. And you're going to get that failure mentality when you need to have an abundant mentality. So focus on a category you want to start with. I really think it's beneficial to start with ourselves because what you're probably thinking is I want to be a boss bitch and get the best guy at my school, or I want to be a boss bitch and have a million friends. Okay, of course. But those things, those social connections are byproducts of the work we have to do inside first, right? I always say you can't be half of a whole, whether that's a whole relationship with a boy, a whole best friendship, a whole good relationship with your sister, whatever it might be. If you don't know what half you are, you got to know what you bring to the table because if you don't, first of all, no one's going to know what they can connect to you. It's like, well, who are you? You're just sort of this amorphous emotional blob. And I don't know 
what personality aspects I can connect to as your friend, as your boyfriend, as your sister, as whatever. And also, you aren't going to know what you need, right? Maybe you actually don't need the party friend, the wild and crazy friend, because you have enough of that like going on in yourself, you know? Maybe you actually need someone who's going to bring it down a little bit, who's going to tap into the dorky sides of your personality because you don't have those, those things developed yet, right? So we got to get with ourselves. And I'm, girl, I know. Nobody wants to do that. It's very painful. The most difficult work we have as humans is to sit inside ourselves and be like, here I am. Here I am. But you know what? Everywhere you go, there you are. You can't outrun who you are. You can't outrun who you need. I mean, you can try. People do. They end up on meth. And they're running their ass all over a cornfield in the middle of the night screaming about aliens. Like, you can do that. It's not a great way to live and it kind of doesn't solve the problem. And then you've made a bigger problem on top of this. So like I said, you're probably going to want to start with like every single category at once. I really believe strongly in working on our bodies and not to look good. It's not about bikini body. It's not about being a size, whatever. It's about feeling in control of your real estate because our, our personhood is our home. It's our real estate. It's our house. We live inside it 24 hours a day. So if you were like, I want to get my life in order, where would you probably start? Getting your house in order, right? I'm going to clean my room. I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to open three weeks worth of mail. I hate checking my mail. Literally, I only want to hire an assistant so that someone will check my mail and tell me the bad news like in person so I don't, oh, it gives me high just thinking about it. Blah. You would start with like actual things inside your house. Before you were like, let's tear down all the walls. You'd be like, well, let's put away our clothes first. You know, let's see what we're working with here. So let's clean up our personhood. Let's get physical. Let's get active. Let's get out there being physical. And I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're walking around a lake every single night, feeding the ducks, naming all of them, building a rapport with the geese. Fine. Moving gives you endorphins. Endorphins creates the oxytocin, like the happiness chemical, right? And the dopamine. And it's going to make you feel better about yourself. And it can be really hard to start like moving and like getting up and being physical. It seems overwhelming. You know, like when you get so bored, you don't want to do anything. You know that feeling like if you run out of stuff to do at work and then you're like, no one needs to ever assign me anything ever again. No, you stagnate. And really moving your body helps with that. Getting up and walking around. Take a dance class. Go ice skating. Go to the Natural History Museum and learn about dinosaurs. Make sure it's something active. Notice I said, learn about dinosaurs. That wasn't an accident. Why? Because part number two of this is to tap into the dorky you. We all have an inner dork. And as we get older and we like, it happens around puberty, you know, when it's no longer cool to like wear rainbow light up sneakers and orange pants and purple eyeshadow and talk about dinosaurs all the time. You have to be talking about boys and fashion and clothes and Shawn Mendes. I, I'm describing myself. <laughs> but like, we, as women especially, are taught to push that dorkiness aside. It's time to become a woman. And surely that can't walk hand in hand with being glamorous and desirable. The f yes, it can. You know why? Because interesting people, and alphas are interesting, have interests. They have interests. I was talking to a girl today. She's like, I don't know why I never get second dates. I really try to be like as friendly and agreeable as possible on, on my first date. And it's like, guys never call me back. I'm like, yeah, because they don't know what they're connecting to. You aren't leading with your interests. You're not leading with a personality. And I talked before about leading with sweetness on dates in my Rihanna video. I used to think that leading with my interests meant I was like aggressive and blah, blah, blah. And here's everything that you're doing. Rah! Like screaming my resume from the halls. And it's not. It's not. It's, it means you can talk to people about a variety of different things because you yourself are a variety of different dimensions, right? And I know that you are. I know that you are. And if you're not, bitch, it's time to be. So how do we go about, how do we do that? Say that you don't have a weird dinosaur aspect of yourself or whatever it might be marine biology, space. It's usually something nerdy, something having to do with nature maybe, or the arts, painting, reading, poetry. If you never got the chance to really lean into that, today is the day. Make time for dorkiness. And I know you're probably thinking, that's what creates an alpha? Yeah. Because like I said, an interesting person has interests. 
And it's also going to give you empathy to connect with a lot of other people. I am a very diverse person. I play instruments. I speak a bunch of languages. I was in army ROTC. I did bull riding. I played hockey. Like I'm obviously a writer. I write songs, blah, blah, blah. Like I do a lot of different things because I want to be able to talk to a lot of different people. And on some level, I know that all of my weird hobbies are sort of like socially self-serving. It's like, I want to learn another language so that when I'm at a party, I can be like, yeah, I'm learning Portuguese. Like, yes, that's like selfish and maybe shallow, but I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I'm doing it and I'm still pursuing it and still diversifying me. And who cares if maybe my initial motive to be like a little bit more interesting at a cocktail party and show up this girl who's a model and that's kind of all she does is she's tall and pretty for a living, but I... I'm shorter and maybe a little less pretty, but I'm more interesting, you know? And okay, so that's my initial motive. It doesn't matter because the ends justifies the means. And by the time I get there, by the time I've completed my course in my next language, I have diversified myself and I've forgotten that initial reason. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't really care if somebody at a party, I don't care. I don't care what they think because I think something great about myself now. And that's where the dorkiness gets you. It gets you that self-worth and that pride and the knowledge of yourself. Because like I said, right, you can't be half the whole if you don't know what half you are. Now I know. Now I have another data point. I know who I am. I'm that international girl. I'm the jet set bitch. I'm, I have a brain and it works. And it works for more than picking out an outfit and stocking Sean Mendes. It works for something that has really enriched my life that I'm going to take with me forever. So that confidence is also going to turn red flags into deal breakers. What? What did I just say? This is another part of being an alpha. You know your boundaries, right? If we think of like an alpha wolf, an alpha male wolf who leads the pack, he knows what he is going to allow, what threats he will deem as viable and what's not. Because he knows exactly what that pack needs. He knows exactly what the boundaries are, right? We as humans are the same way. When you know yourself and when you're confident about who you are, that means you understand what it is you need. And that means you can evaluate people and be like, pew, 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 don't need any of you. I can see through the bullshit. I can see what it is you're really after. Maybe just sex. Maybe using me on Snapchat as an emotional fidget spinner when you're bored and just snapping me stupid pictures. Maybe it's a job that it's like, you're actually not ever going to get me that raise. I'm never going to have a corner office here. So I'm moving on because I know who I am. I know what I need. I know what my value is and my worth because I work on myself. And now I can see that these red flags, that's what I would call them when I didn't know myself, when I wasn't very confident. Actually, they're deal breakers. Oh, you're rude to a waitress? Hmm, that's a red flag. Not no more, it ain't. That's a deal breaker because I know what that actually is. That might seem like like a topic. Yeah, it's just a topic. Okay, fine. He's he's rude to like waiters and wait staff. What that actually indicates is that someone is a beta male, right? They oppress other people. They need to cut other people down to feel better about themselves. Their only source of personal power is being mean to the guy making my taco who immigrated here from Guatemala and literally doesn't need your shit. Sorry, Connor. Like, and so now I can look at that and be like, out. Because what an alpha doesn't do is waste her time. And that's the thing with learning about them. And that's the thing that a lot of us get tripped up on. We see another alpha female and we immediately feel jealous. We experience that leveling, you know? It's like, fuck Kelsey, I don't want to be around her. She's such a bitch. It's like, maybe she's not a bitch. Maybe she's just popular and she's on JV Lacrosse or Varsity Lacrosse, whatever. It's like, maybe she actually has something you can learn from. So it's really, really, really easy for us to try to cut down other alphas when we see them because we feel inferior. And so it's like, I can't let my ego stand near this person. You know, like I can't sit inside my real estate. I'd so much rather be inside hers. No, 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 no. You can't like, you can't jump into Rihanna. I wish. But what we can do is lean into that. I learned a long time ago to get closer to people. I initially think I don't like, I mean, if it's like an instinctive thing, there's this girl there's this girl and she's friends with a friend. And I'm like, I don't like you. And we just, we just don't like each other. We're like oil and water. She's always got something smart to say. Like, you really, you really want to say something smart to me? Do I seem like the kind of person who 
can't come up with anything back, try it. So that, that kind of dynamic aside, if I see a girl who, I, and I know how to identify now someone I just don't like and someone who I'm actually secretly jealous of. And I lean into that jealousy. I get closer to her. I learn about what makes her tick. I learn from her because people like to be asked questions and they like to feel like an expert. So if I see a girl who's got a great body, like I do this all the time in a locker room, not all the time, cause that would be weird, but I'm like, you have like great muscle tone. Tell me what your workouts are. And girls are like, oh, let me tell you, I do bar class and soul sign bubble. Like people love to feel like an expert in whatever it is. And I'm like, okay, I've gained some knowledge or you get close enough to people that you think you envy. And you're like, ah, mm, actually she's not that cool. You know who is cool? Me. Why? Because I've done the work. And that's the thing with Kylie Jenner, right? We look at her and it's like, wow, this life. And she's so like popular and she's 140 million followers. Blah, 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 blah. And then you lean in and you're like, oh, baby girl, damn, damn. You understand the psychology behind her because I've told you and I'm a genius. You lean in closer to Rihanna and you're like, wow, that is a tycoon in the making. That's a robber baron. I love it. So here's what we know so far. You got to start with yourself, right? Start by doing something physical, whatever it is. Get that confidence up. Move your body. Yes, our mind creates our body. Stress will literally cause cancer and infertility, but our bodies also create our mind. It's a proven fact that if you stand in the superwoman pose, you know, stand with your hands on your hips for, I think, a minute and a half to two minutes, your confidence goes up and dopamine is released. Wild. So get moving. Also, get dorky. Get dorky. Connect with those parts of yourself when you were a kid, when you just experienced pure joy, whether it was at the library or throwing a birthday party for your dog. I threw a lot of birthday parties for my dog <laughs> or ice skating or whatever it was. Go back to that and literally spend one whole day doing that. Have an inner child party for yourself and really see how that makes you feel. See if you get a little bit more knowledge about who you are and where you want to go. If it's like, okay, I really like dinosaurs when I was a kid, not super into the stegosauri right now, but I had such a cool time at the natural history museum. I want to take some classes there. I want to take an art class there. It's a gateway to a lot of other aspects of your personality that maybe you're not tapping into, right? Next, find another alpha and lean into it. Learn. Either you're going to learn from her like wonderful traits, or you're going to learn from her mistakes, right? Either way, it's data and it's knowledge. And that gives you knowledge about yourself. And what? Red flags become deal breakers. You are going to go into the world and say, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. And you know what that makes you? A leader. Because here's what a leader does. A leader makes decisions. First of all, a leader is a pack builder. Alphas are pack builders, right? They don't just stand up for themselves. They stand up for other people. Barack Obama, pack builder. Bernie Sanders, pack builder. Kamala Harris, pack builder. Donald Trump, not a pack builder. He oppresses and divides. Again, you don't like it, don't watch. So you are going to show these leadership capabilities and people are going to be magnetized by that because you're going to demonstrate fearlessness. It's going to look like fearlessness to other people who haven't done this work, who maybe aren't alphas, but to you, it's just streamlined decision-making. Well, of course, I'm going to help this person. Well, of course, I don't want that kind of energy in my life. Well, of course, I'm going to go after this opportunity because you've identified who you are, what you need, what you bring to the table and what you will and won't accept. So you are moving through life at hyper speed compared to everyone else. You are using, you're optimized and that's going to make you so much more successful. You're going to make friends easier because you know what you do and don't want. You're going to magnetize boys because they're going to be like, damn, I want to be around that girl. Quality guys will. Fuck boys won't. Fuck boys want someone who's weak and malleable and they're impatient. They want to get in and get out, literally. And so they're going to take one look at you and you're going to take one look at them and be like, nah. And you're going to weed them out. And you're not going to have fuck boy problems anymore, right? And then you're going to start to achieve things because you have time that is now optimized and you're using it. You're setting goals now. You're starting that business. You're going back to school. You're learning that fifth language. And you feel good about yourself. And baby, you're an alpha. Welcome. It's really not as hard as you think. And it's actually 
really fun. It's really fun to fall in love with your own life. Because like I said, you're in this real estate 24 hours a day. You might as well enjoy it, clean it up, renovate it, because you know what? You can't burn it down. You can fill it with a bunch of crap, like an emotional hoarder, and end up in that methy cornfield, or you can do the work and love where it is you're living. If you guys have other questions on this, follow me on the Instant Go app and click chat to get connected. My username is ShallonXO and I'm ShallonXO on Instagram. Find me on there and connect with me. I love it. And be sure and listen to my new podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday.